Hello guys, um, my name is Lucas. I'm here to try to make a snip calling on a maze genome. I have some data from GBS, uh, the genotyping by sequencing, and I want to make these raw data that are in FastQ files and make them become SNPs and that we can use in mapping, GWAS, and things like this. The first thing we have to understand is that we have a setup of files to use and they have, I don't know if they should or not have the exact names that I'm using here, but I'm gonna show you the files I have and how they have to be arranged. So the first one is the barcode file. I'm not gonna enter into details or the theory behind everything I'm gonna talk. There's some tutorials on the internet and some lectures from Bucker Lab. You can look for that. But the first thing is to look at the barcode file. The barcode file has the key file. And I'm gonna just open a CSV so you can look how it sh should be. In this file, um, you have these columns with the name flow cell, uh, lane, barcodes, sample, plate name, row column, and library prep ID. So the flow cell um, it is respect to the sequencing used, the lane to the barcode the lab should give to you which barcode he used for each genotype. Uh, you have the samples, the sample is the name you give them, uh, the plate name should be the same for uh, each individual because we are working on a plate at a time so this were just for the plate one and row and columns uh, is how when you submit your DNA you had to submit in a plate and you put row A, column 1 and the DNA for that individual same for, for B1, C1, D1 etc so the library prep ID, uh, it's arbitrary, you can put whatever you want since it, uh, it's d just important to be in order, like 1, 2, 9, 6, which is uh, our plate size. So each well here corresponds to one genotype, one barcode, and we have a blank in each plate. So this is how the, the barcode file or key file uh, is done. But the problem is, how can I know my, my flow cell name and my lane number? The first thing to do is, so I'm going to raise this. I'm just letting the text file inside the barcode file. The first thing to do uh, is to, to know the name of the flow cell and, and lane. My FastQ file, which is what the lab gave me, it's in this file called reads and it's uh, compressed in gz, .gz. I can't open this, it's 11.5 gigabytes, but we can try to give a command on Linux and trying to find the, the flow cell name. I'm gonna open the terminal and here I'm gonna change the directory to documents these names are in Portuguese because I'm from Brazil so if you see some things different doesn't matter what I have here inside this file okay cd castle reads and inside the reads I have this which is my fastq file and I'm gonna with a command called zcat the maze plate and just put head here um, 15 or 10 um, I don't know what happened just a second okay I have to put this first. Yeah, perfect. 
this is the how your fastkey file is this thing here c707 jac uh, xs this is your flow cell name so you're gonna take note of this and put for each genotype in your key file you're gonna put the same name the same thing here seven is your lane now there you have this you can close and go back to the barcode file you're gonna open that so in the flow cell you have the you're gonna put the same flow cell for each individual and and the same for the lane number okay let's see so i think this is what important for the barcode file hep map out this is the file where your results gonna be our, your output file so there's nothing yet because we didn't run the analysis reads we are talking another important thing here is that you have to rename your fastq file with your flow cell name and lane number so that's where what we're gonna do now rename we're gonna erase and put our cell flow name in my case is c707 jc and flow cell name so dash seven dash okay dot fastq dot gz that's right that's what it should be so this is really important uh, tags counts is empty too and topm uh, this is the tags on physical map for each crop or each species you are working uh, they have uh, already done this for maize it's easy and how to download this file this 5.3 gigabyte file you should go to the panzia.org you go to data genotypic data sets and you go here maize gbs genotypes and click here in more uh, here you have the the file you want this that I'm highlighting you have two ways of running GBS one of those is the discovery pipeline but in our case with maze we just do the production snip calling you're gonna download this file in the iPlant platform would be the most recommended okay so you download it and put here now that you have all the files set up you have the barcode file barcode uh, key file and then text uh, help map out where your results gonna be reads where your fast key files are uh, tag counts you're gonna get empty and topm file which are our tags on physical map okay so the first thing to do is to prepare the command line okay the command line here I have an example to show I'm just gonna plug my flash drive you have to decide whatever you want to be in this command this is our command line for running the pipeline so here you have the, the command here in this command you decide how much gigabytes you are putting to run the analysis so this is important because if you have a 32 gigabytes memory in your computer you can put here like 28 or 30 or 24 but if you just have 24 in your computer you should put here 18 or 20 never put your whole capacity okay so you open a fork and here the the production snip color plugin and you start to deciding all the arguments you need here you have i which is where my fastq files are in my computer here k is my key file where is it in my computer and the name my key file name is maze plate one dot text e is the enzyme used in your gbs m is the the topm file where is it and um, needs a castle here okay 
and the name of the file. Oh, it's the out output. And you, my output name is production v2 2 dot hapmap dot h5. This is the name I decided to put. Okay. So you went plugin and run fork one. This is our command basically. Not that difficult to understand. And but if you have any problem to understand each of these arguments, you should come to the Tesla, which is in the Buckler Lab website. So they have all the Tesla five pipeline commands, or you can see the genotypes by sequence pipeline document too. Uh, you have all the explanation for what we are doing. For example, here the flow cell number that I talked. We have all the enzyme, the each of the arguments means I O and everything you need to know okay everything you can find online on the website just put on Google TESO 5 and you're gonna find everything okay now we're going to open the terminal again and you're gonna copy and paste uh, let me just see if I copy you're gonna copy this We have to put all that information from the file here on the terminal. And first of all, you have to know where this file is in your computer, this TESO5 standalone run pipeline, okay? In my case, it's in documents, so I'm gonna change the directory again. Um, here I have the, here it is, TESO standalone. So I can run the pipeline uh, right now. I'm gonna cancel because I don't want to get too in trouble here because my computer is not good enough to run this. I'm just making this tutorial in a four gigabytes computer. But I made this analysis in a 32 gigabytes of RAM and it took one or two hours to run so it takes a while even it's a good computer I'm just not gonna do now because I don't want to crash my computer okay so after you do this it's gonna run pretty well I, I made several times you're gonna see that in your file um, called hapmap out you're gonna have a output file and you can open that on Tesla and take a look how it is. That's what we're gonna do right now. I have an example here, uh, the production. So I'm gonna open the terminal again. Here in the terminal, I'm gonna change the directory. And I'm gonna put the command um, Tesla 5. start tesla.com so it's going to open the interface that's great here you have the tesla you can now we're going to have a look take a look in that file we got so you're going data and load and load hdf file so we're going to open this file production 2 that's the name i gave this is how it looks. You have the SNP information for each of the individuals. Your genotypes are here in this column. Each line is a genotype and the columns are the SNP position. So I'll, as you can see, we have, for example, in this case, TEXA. TEXA is the name they gave for this kind of analysis to the samples or individuals. We have 9.6. Uh, number of sites is the number could be like the SNPs or the regions or number of SNPs which is like almost one million so and he give it for you for for each chromosome 
and here you can have the nucleotide code so you have like when you see IA it means that it's AA when you see like for example S it means like it's CG which means it's a uh, heterozygous locus just so you can have an idea you can have you can see this in a major minor allele or you can see like just a heterozygous or missing you can you have several ways to do that Oh, so this is how we do the SNP calling but you have a lot of missing data you have a lot of regions that you don't have any information so it's really important to make a imputation in this data and filtering and another steps that in the next videos you're gonna work with me on that okay so for now just the SNP calling we have all the the data for each individual thank you for watching me and I hope we can uh, talk more in next videos okay bye bye